My name is Coco Semino, and I got next. You next up, and you ain't been on sports like talk. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> hey, you better hit him up. Look, you breaking next, and you up next. Keep the queens go hard. Rise the star on the big scene. Make them know who you are. You don't break a sweat. Don't settle for less. They put you through that test. Your resume that flesh. Who got next? Who got next? SLT, for the set go. Who got next? Who got next? Living my dreams and all your goals. Who got next? Who got next? You can ask B. Jones or head coach. Who got next? Who got next? You next up, so here's my vote. Ch- SLT Nation. Welcome back to another exciting episode of Sports Life Talk. You got next. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we take you to my home state. We are back on the bayou, except this time we are on the diamond. We're gonna do we're gonna pick up a ball in the back and we're gonna show some love to HBCU's finest. Coco Semino is in the building. Coco, are you ready to rock and roll? Yes, sir. Let's get to it. Hey, all right. Well, I am your host, the mouth of the South, B. Jones. I am rocking alongside my colleague and co-host, the head coach, KT. Kev, how you feeling today, man? I'm feeling great, man. It's just an honor to have an HBCU baseball player on our show today. I know. Coco, You, this is a first. This is a first for us. In honor of you, I'm rocking the black and gold. I had to, I had to show my folks down at Xavier some love. If you are rocking with us the first time, Thank y'all for checking us out. You Got Next is a series where Kevin and I have dedicated our life's blood and our work to giving athletes, entrepreneurs, influencers, creative geniuses, gurus, directors, anybody an opportunity. If you're doing amazing things and accomplishing big dreams, we are going to give them a platform. And that is what You Got Next is all about. And uh, if this is your first time checking out the channel, thank you so much for giving us the opportunity, giving us the look. Whether you were here to hear Coco's story or you're here for me to embarrass KT in another episode of Championship Browns, it means a lot. So in tradition, we have a quick favor of you. YouTube is telling us that we have to grow to a thousand subscribers in order for them to take us seriously. All right. And so me and Kev, we looked at each other and said, it is time for the takeover. We can't do the takeover without you. So on the count of three, we need you to smash that subscribe button. Here we go. One, two, three. Ooh, man, that feels so good. Every time we do that, Kev, I just feel like we're growing an inch tall. I don't know what it is, man. But uh, if you did hit that smash, that, that subscribe button, welcome to all kind of free content. We're going to provide you guys some, some amazing experience. You Got Next is dropped every Thursday and sa- a Sunday. And uh, we got stories just like the one we're going to give you today. So without further ado, Coco, you're not smiling, man. You're making me nervous. What's going on, man? You, you the truth. Hey, well, let me tell y'all a little bit about Coco. Infielder, outfielder. Xavier University, HBCU. This kid was in the top 25 of HBCU draft prospects, all tournament team, all conference. The guy can hit home runs, stolen bases, just an all around excellent baseball player. And you know what? He's also a good, wholesome human being. Coco, before we get to you, my friend, we got to get you initiated. Are you ready for this? This experience, this once in a lifetime experience that KT's finna, he, he will make it, you know, somewhat hard on you. All right. Kev. All right, Coco. To initiate you into the SLT family, you got to give us your top five hip hop artists. Number one, I'm going to have to go with Lil Wayne. Pretty much been my favorite artist since I was little. Uh, number two, I'm going to go with probably Bruno Mars. Really? No, yeah, that's a good one. I think that's the first person that said Bruno. I, I mm-hmm. could be yeah. incorrect, but it's been like he just one of the smoothest guys out in the game. He is smooth. You know, I'm gonna tell you like this, man. If Bruno, if, if Bruno sent my wife a DM, or, uh, if he just if he just started liking any of her pictures, I'm, I'm gonna be not. Well, I'm gonna lose sleep, man. Yeah. Well, I I'm, I'm whooping his little ass. He's trying to do it more. Uh, I go probably gonna go J Cole, number three. Yeah, yeah, the man just—he just knows how to get it done. That boy J Cole hot. Yeah, probably gonna go with probably one of the greatest artists of all time, Michael Jackson. Mm. You no, know, yeah, since I was little, the first time I heard him, I couldn't stop listening to him. So you know, I gotta give respect to him. 
then it probably about I'll go probably female artists. Probably go it'd be out of Nikki or Rihanna out of one of those two. I, I so love if, I love that so, list. So man. if you had to pick though, who you picking? Uh, I'm gonna have to say Nikki. Just I'll probably listen to her more. Yeah, I, I'll give you that, Nikki. But I'd rather look at Rihanna. All right. So who is your, who is your favorite? I'd rather pick? look at Nikki. Mm, Rihanna's. That's for another show. So who is your? Uh, give us some of your favorite sports teams. Uh, I'll probably say my favorite team. First team I really started liking is you know I'm still a fan. Steelers? Yeah. Steelers. What? Since I was little. That was the first team I really st- actually liked. So, that'd be one. And then I'm a uh, little the Los Angeles Dodgers. So, that's my, that's my team for baseball. I wouldn't say I have a basketball team. Really, I'm more of a, I just like players. Yeah, yeah that's how most people are. That's how, you know, yeah. If before we started you got next show, uh Coco, I would have I, I never knew that people really follow players. It's it's important when we see these these major these major league organizations make these decisions based off of a player's behavior. I get it now. Like literally you are not the only one that says, I follow LeBron, I follow Kyrie, I follow Kevin Durant. Or and it, it goes to a lot of different sports, man. So that's Hey, I'm even guilty of following Shaquille O'Neal. I, I follow Shaq. You know, I'm from Louisiana. I, 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 I didn't introduce myself, but I'm the Louisiana myself. Yeah. And uh, I follow Shaq everywhere he went, man. Yeah, so with me, I'm a Chris Paul fan. So CP3. And he's been a little bit of everywhere. Yeah, like, I was so hyped when I finally, when he finally get to make it to the finals. I've been waiting on that for my, my whole life. Hey, two games away. Two games. Then I can right. say I've been an Oregon fan since I was a little kid. University of Oregon. And honestly, just because of the uniforms. Yeah, you can't go wrong, wrong with that. Shoot, Nike got them boys laced up up there. <laughs> right. I haven't let them go, so I've been loyal to them this whole time. So. All right, so who is your favorite superhero and why? I have to say Spider-Man. Because, like, as a kid... You know, that's when the first original Spider-Man came out. You know, that's what got me hooked on it. You know, I was Spider-Man for Halloween. You know, I always tried to, I always wanted to walk on walls and everything, swing through there like that. And then, you know, comics, they got so many comics that you can really be so it's like, that's always been my um, favorite superhero as a little kid. All right, Peter Parker. What would your theme song be? Uh, I'll probably say uh, I Made It, you know, by Kevin Rudolph, you know, Cash Money. I don't know if y'all know it. No, nah, I ain't never heard of that one. I have heard of, that. heard of Cash Money. but I mean, I heard of Cash yeah. Money, but I've never heard the song that uh, oh, yeah. I finally made it. Yeah, the Wayne's in it. Got his, got his part in there. But, you know, it's pretty much a song saying, I didn't been through a lot. It's been a long time coming, but finally I made it, basically. No, All right, it's been one of my favorite songs. And on that note, you have made it into the SLT family. So B Jones, take it away. Finally made it into the family. Coco, welcome, welcome to the show, man. I, I first and foremost, anybody who's who who may be like he don't get the right to call him Coco. That's I, I'm sorry. His his real name is Cortland, but I love Coco. Man, how'd you get the nickname Coco, brother? Uh, my mom pretty much gave it to me as a baby. Yeah, my, my, my sister couldn't really say my name. And then she said, kind of, you know, I was a baby, like a little cocoa bean. You know, that's the ah. that's a story. Like, that's what she told me, you know. So, kind of, I ain't going to run from it. And then, you know, there's been a family name, family, uh, neighbors, friends, community. Yeah. And so, as, since I was a child. And then, kind of became one of my baseball names because my mom always calling me that. And so, you know. The tournaments and games, she's all shouting. And then she's like, let's go, Coco. And then, you know, everybody started calling me that for baseball. So it stuck. What, what, what was it like growing up in Bruley? Did I get it right? Did I say it right? Yeah. I'm from Louisiana and I didn't know it was yeah. called Bruley. I'm from the, you know what, Coco? I, you know, I'm, I'm from Shreveport, right? Oh, yeah. I, moved, I moved out here to the DFW. I said, uh, people be like, man, what part of Louisiana are you from? I said, I'm from Shreveport. They say, oh, you from West Texas. It's a total different world down there, huh? That's up north. That's 
two totally different places. Yeah, it is, man. It's a different vibe, man. So tell us about growing up in Brulee. Uh, you know, it's really small suburban town right outside of Baton Rouge, like right across the river. Uh, West Baton Rouge Parish, you know, really community oriented town. Uh, a lot of sugar cane fields. Got a whole sugar cane plantation. And, you know, it's a really big sports town. So yeah, that's that's the whole state. Now, that's the one thing about Louisiana. No matter where you go, they playing baseball, football, basketball, yeah. hunting, fishing. It don't matter, man. We we out and about, man. So when did you uh, when did you fall in love with baseball? I mean, like you said, it's an athletic town. You could have went a lot of different directions. You got LSU down the road, so I know it's some heavy football influence. Well, LSU got a great baseball team as well, but I know I know you probably dreamed of playing a lot of different sports. So why why baseball? Uh, so. Honestly, it's a funny story how I got into baseball, and my dad was just like, so he, he kind of, you know, when you, when you little, the doctor tell you how far, how tall you probably will be, how big. So he figured I ain't going to be that tall, that big. So, you know, football and basketball kind of, it's going to be a question mark. And he's like, well, baseball, you know, you don't got to be too big to play that. So he kind of stuck me in it, see how it goes. And so... I was out. I was really good at a young age, so when I kind of stuck to it, it was fun for me. So I kept playing it. Yeah. But basketball, honestly, was my first love. Of course. Basketball was? Yeah, I'm a huge basketball fan to this day still. But you know, baseball is kind of better. So you know, I get to I'm getting to high school and my freshman year, I played both in, in high school. That's a really hard thing to do coming from basketball, then go straight to baseball, and you know, got. I'm really, I'm still really good at baseball, so I kind of had to make a decision. Started to focus on baseball more, and started getting looked at by different teams, different schools. So, and finally made my decision my senior year. I was really committed to Jackson State, but uh, that didn't really work out. And then my senior year, that's the year Roger Cato retired, and so we had a new coach come in, and I was off. My assistant coach offered me a spot so uh, that's when i made my decision to go to southern so, yeah man southern Ooh, wait so you've been on two hbcu campuses yeah two different experiences so. now now I is uh it. is brulee a predominantly african-american community that's about about half and half so what what was the uh what was the the, the composite of the diversity on your baseball teams growing up see i from, from you know in shreveport it was, you know, we had some African Americans that played baseball, but that was majority a, a sport left, you know, that the Caucasian because it's so expensive to play. I mean, it's yeah. not like basketball. You buy some sneakers yeah. and a and a jersey. I mean, you got to travel ball, and I mean, you got to keep up with the gear and those. Just yeah, the uniforms yeah. alone are pretty, pretty, uh, you know, uh, yeah. difficult to come across. Yeah, and I, you know, I never take that for granted. So I always felt blessed to be able to have that experience of playing travel ball and everything. But of course, coming up, you know. Mostly the baseball players, you know, they were white. So I was always one of the only blacks on the team, maybe one or two other ones. But coming up doing travel ball, I played most of my travel ball years in Baton Rouge, coming out of it. So, and of course there I was still not that many blacks on the team. So yeah, it was a just, and then when I get to high school, you know, my freshman year, there were, it was four of us. And then one was a senior. And then the other two had transferred and went somewhere else. So, so it kind of left me as the only black for two years. And then we finally got another one my senior year. So All right. Like that. So then you go from that to stepping foot on the HBCU campus where literally all 35, 40 men are, are African-Americans. Yeah. Man, how was that experience? Looking around the locker room, seeing nothing but a bunch of faces that remind you of yourself, your coach. Your assistants, everybody, or some people that could be your uncles, could be your cousins. You know, how, how did that, how did that experience change? Yeah, sure. It was a big, it was a big difference. You know, big change of environment, different cultures. You know, kind of just walk in, and you know, I was taught, you know, play the game a certain way, certain things you do to prepare. You know, certain this. You walk in, some guys don't apply for those rules, so you kind of gotta. You know, adjust to them, but at the same time, still be you. So it, it was a big difference, but now, at the same time, you know, 
I kind of, I'm, I've been a person to adjust to pretty much anything, adapt to pretty much anything. So it wasn't that hard for me to adapt to that. But, you know, it was a pretty, it was a pretty big difference. Yeah. So, so now we, um, this is a, a very special week. Now, when your friends and family watch this, of course, it'll be later on down the road. But as we record this, the Major League Baseball draft is happening. They just had the, the first round yesterday. They're going to go through probably 30, 40 rounds. I don't know how many rounds they do at baseball. It's, it's ridiculous. Yeah, it's a bunch of rounds that people are able to get drafted. And your name just so happened to come across a very, very prestigious list as one of the top 25 HBCU athletes or baseball players eligible uh, as a prospect for this draft, man. Do you did, how did you find out that you were on that list and and what what does being on that list mean to you? So actually, my teammate, he's, he's from Dallas. He sent it to me and I, I had no clue myself. Uh, so, but I, I knew Black College Nine. That's that's the um, you know the organization that puts it all out there. So I kind of was just like kind of I was, was kind of surprised because you know it's my first year really starting this past year. So I didn't think I was that kind of looked at yet quite yet. So I was just kind of it was and to me it's like it's a blessing, it's an honor, you know. HBCU baseball kind of been over, you know, it's not like the top 25, like top five conferences, but you know, there's a lot of hidden gems in, in those schools. Man, it's so it's so much we could talk about on just that alone. Me and Kev, we we met so many talented HBCU football players, and it's 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 egregious that uh, that our African American athletes, just because of the conference they play on the school, just don't get the same type of optics and opportunity, man. Uh, but you did you get they did do something special for you guys. You guys they created a Black World Series, which I thought was fun. I didn't even know about Coco. You exposed me to the to the to the college Black World Series. I thought that was dope, man. And you go down there. And you acted a nut, man. Three, four stolen bases. You made the all-conference tournament team. Uh, t- tell us a little bit about that experience of playing in the uh, in the, in the in the in the African American World Series. Uh, man, that was a great experience. You know, uh, I got to travel to a uh, historically famous black city in Montgomery, Alabama. You know, a lot of history goes there, and that's another top HBCUs team Alabama stays there so which I have a lot of history playing at that school I mean playing against that school it was just like just me being there just in front just on that stage get to represent my school it's just, it was just an honor to me and I kind of took that you know I really took that seriously so I really wanted to make it I mean, make a name for myself really put myself out there try to give it all I had just to get that championship but sadly we fell short but you know we, my team fought hard you know I was proud of all of them they weren't scared you know they give it they, we really fought to the end and you know we had a lot of odds against us but you know yeah it was a really great experience you know I couldn't ask for a better first year a way to end the first year you got one more though yeah you got one more. Hey, so, Kev, one more question. I'm sorry, Kev. Hey, uh, and now you play outfield now. Off air, you told us that you played infield your whole life, and then you switched over to outfield once you got to university, once you got to Southern. Is that correct? Yeah. W- which, which is your favorite? Would you rather go back to the infield? Because uh, I ain't going I miss playing infield. It's a lot more action happens. But, you know, I feel like outfield, I kind of – it's a little tough transition, but, you know – I was able to work behind some really great defensive outfielders at Southern. Uh, one actually did get drafted. You know, JV Williams, he plays for the, the Giants organization. But I was able to go behind these guys every day. And then they, kind of, they just helped me develop into the outfit I am today. So, you know, and I, I like being in outfield. You look good in outfield though. You, you got you got that outfield to look though. When I look at your pictures, you you look <laughs> you look amazing out there. I'm like, hey, that boy, that look like he can go. Yeah, it's about I can I don't like it's pretty chill. You know, you don't have to do as much. You just got to make sure whatever's hit to you, you got to go get it. <laughs> you know, you can make a lot of you know you can make a lot of high highlight real plays out there too. So you know, it's really fun. I can say it's really fun to do. 
All right, Coco, if somebody came to you and put you in charge of like promoting baseball in areas dominated by football and basketball, what would you do? How would you uh, promote it? Uh, so, I, mean, I can easily just, you know, go out there and be like, hey, there's so many different opportunities to play. So, like, unlike football, you know, football, you really just got, you know, a few leagues. You got the NFL, you got the Lady and the maybe a little, like, a couple other small leagues. But it's hard to really get a chance to continue to play football, baseball. There's so many different leagues that you can play in you got summer ball leagues you got independent leagues and there's so many different teams you know it's a really it's really not hard to get to college if you're serious about it so and then honestly i can really show anybody how fun baseball really is like it's a really fun sport to play. so not just you know show like a lot of times in our you know african-american communities they don't have the resources to really get into the sport and so I really, what I, I do personally, I always love like just going into those communities and trying to put it out there like, hey, baseball, a lot of black guys can really perform at a high level and get looked at for this. It's not just basketball, it's not just football, not just track, but you know, talent wise, you got all so many different African-American players that are very, very talented that probably don't get to you know, the shine, you don't get the recognition that a lot of these other guys get. And I would, for one, go try to enter those communities and try to find those guys, try to shine a light on those guys just to get them looked at, get them recognized. But in all fairness, though, KT, they, they do a great job of that in other countries. Yeah, I know. I'm just saying, yeah. you know, here. Yeah, here in America, we struggle. Yeah. We don't, yeah. and that's that's something that, that, you know, that mental side of it. All right, Coco. So what is something that baseball has taught you that you can use in everyday life? Uh, probably the biggest thing is how to adapt to different ethnicities, to different people. You know, a lot of, um, you get to a lot of jobs, high class, you're not going to be too many of us. Probably you're going to have to adapt to sitting down with the white man, sitting down with the Hispanic man, sitting down with a Asian man. You're gonna have to adapt to different, you know, races. You gotta learn how to expand your, you know, expand your, your brand. Like my mom always calls it. You know, like grow your brand. You gotta know how to put yourself out there. And you know, me playing baseball, I've met so many different people from so many different places. And I've been able to network myself with different people of all over the place, so of different races, of different ethnicities. So I, I can say that's baseball has brought me that the most. And of course, it, it showed me a lot about myself. As in like mentally, I've been through a lot, I can say, in my career, as far as going to different teams, you know, facing things that probably did not fair. You know, I, felt, I felt like I should be, you know, you always feel like you should be playing more or you should be playing over this certain person. You know, many people have been in that situation. So I can say it, brought, it showed me a lot about myself, not letting myself get down. Like me seeing how much heart I have. And just, you know, when it came down to me transferring, that was a big decision for me to make. And I was really pretty much betting on myself. So I, I knew I could do more for a team. So, and I just came here and that showed me a lot about myself. And I, you know, I don't, I don't have no quit in me. When things get hard, nothing's really been easy for me in my career. So, I have to fight. I've had to fight through a lot of things. Yeah, that transfer portal is a, it's a beast, man. It's tough. All right, Toko. So, let me ask you this. Have you, um, you probably haven't seen this movie, but I'm pretty sure you heard of this movie. It's like 30 years old, though. Uh, Field of Dreams? Oh, yeah. Okay. In the movie, it's two characters. One is named, his name is Ray. His wife is named Annie. So this is just a long way of me asking you, if you are Ray, do you have a Annie in your life right now? I don't know. I can't say I have. As, uh, you mean like, just like a special girl in my life? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, not right now. 
Yeah. Coco, tell him to go somewhere with that field of dreams. Hey, man. Because, <laughs> hey, I, I try to keep, because, you know, we have a lot of basketball people on here, so I can always go to love and basketball. Yeah, I had to come yeah. up with a new way because it was baseball, B. <laughs> I know, man. I'm yeah. giving you a one. I, like, I like the reference, though. I like the reference. No, not really. Kind of haven't had any girl to stick right now. But kind of just been me, my glove, and my bat. <laughs> That's it. Hey, the, the sisters, huh? <laughs> yeah, but you know. Boy. Yeah, Wait nah. a minute now. Now, now we, we we your big uncles, man. We got to holler at you now. You you on that campus. You on that yard. Now, come on now, Coco. With a name like Coco, you got the swag. You got the juice. You out there making a conference. You can't walk up on one of them, one of them, one of them, uh, them co-eds and say, hey, I'm Coco. Holler at your boy. Yeah, it's been, I mean, out of all the four, I've been in college for four years so far, and I can say there's been a lot of that. Now, Dad is. All right, now the truth coming out of that CLT Nation. Yeah, because he, he was being modest at first. It's just my bad. You know, I, my can say that. I can easily say that's the college experience, though. You told me so many, you. so many beautiful women, especially at HBCU. Like, black queens everywhere. Well, yeah, we, yeah. Hey, Coco, I, I can only imagine because we went out last night. And there were so many queens out. Good. I I wouldn't have survived on HBCU campus. I, I just wouldn't have. I'm, I would have loved that experience, but I would not have made it. Yeah, you know, I can always say I'm truly blessed. He's always a great look at Look how you look at that, look kid. Look at that. That, that was cold. <laughs> <laughs> that was cold word. We feel right. you, playboy. We're going to move on. We're going yeah. <laughs> to. But you tell on yourself. Cause go, go, say, hey, I've been blessed. <laughs> Was you blessed this morning? <laughs> <laughs> See my prayers every, every time I go to bed and every time I wake up. There it is, there man. I love it. I love it, Coco. What else, KT? Oh no, man! It's time for the the championship round. Hey, Coco, how fast are you, man? I'm sitting up there looking at your statistics. You got that Willie Mays Hayes speed, twenty four out of twenty eight stolen bases. The, the cat, the man, the pitcher must be nervous when you get on first. Uh, I can I, I always love to tell people I'm like I, I don't got that that game changer speed, but it's like I, I'm fast enough to get what I need to done. But, is it a you know, is it a science to stealing bases? Is it a science to it? People, you know, er, people like myself. I'm not a baseball guru, right? So I just see it. I'm like, hey, that boy fast. He go get that. But is there a you picking up on certain things? You're looking at how the communication is going. You're trying to find that right time to make that jump or. Yeah, so it's a lot about anticipation. You know, like people always say, like there's a big saying in stealing, but you don't steal off of the catcher, you steal off of the pitcher. Mm. So you can have a good catcher. But you know, it's some kind of, you know, the pitchers give off certain signs where they're about to pitch or they're about to pick, you know, and it's a lot about rhythm. So if you got good rhythm, and then you know, oh, he's about to go to the plate. Or, you know, he's kind of slow to the plate. If I get a good jump, then I'm there. So it's kind of, that's what a lot I do. You know, it's a lot of science behind it. Got to pay attention to a lot of, a lot of paying attention to detail. So, you know, you just get, and you can say the same thing about any sport. I mean, like in basketball, you're trying to see a defender, you know, you're trying to defend, see what a uh, player's tendency is, football. Yeah. The cornerback. There it is. Linebacker, you know, you got to see what a receiver, what moves he's about to make. The quarterback, you read the quarterback eyes, something like that. So, you know, it's could you kind of the could same. you compare it to boxing? Yeah, yeah, you know, like you so good kind of, because Coco, this is a part of the show where Kevin and I we go head to head, we square off in the game, all the championship rounds. You get the privilege of being the host, or I guess the the guest in which you are now calling all the shots. All right, Coco, have you ever played a game called Would You Rather? Yes. All right, so it's very simple, very simple. I'll present an option. Kev will present an option. You get to select one of those. Whichever host you select that, that option gets a point. First host, two points, or the best out of three, will win this game of championship rounds. And right now, this thing is starting to get a little bit out of hand. Kevin is up 29 to 27, so he is up plus two games. Um, and uh, I don't know, man. I'm counting on you, Coco. We we born and bred. We, we born and bred in the mud, man. I need I need you. I need Bruley, t- Bruley, Louisiana, to stand up right now. Show me some love. You ready, man? The championship round. I'm ready. All right, here we go, KT. You the defending champ, sir. 
Well, I had a good old intro too. I called you the Key Sweater Podcast and everything. So you did all that trash talking. No, I did nobody all the trash here. talking. And nobody and don't, ed- don't edit it out neither. Uh, I will. All right, Coco. So both of these questions are based on being in the major league. So would you rather be an MVP, but you never win a ring, or be a consistent role player on a team that wins a ring? So I could say, you know, being a role player really make a difference. I, mean, I can easily say winning a ring is just something that you can never, nobody can ever take away from you. And that's like a great experience. So Wipe me down. I could say I would, I would really love, I would really love to win a ring. And then being a consistent role player, you know, you're making a difference. So. Yeah, say less Say less my friend <laughs> So if I just had multiple MVPs But you didn't win the ring Would it have changed anything? No nope. I, I don't think it would I would have to think about it more Nah yeah, more I mean, you, you want that ring The, the, the look on your eyes yeah. When you said hey, Getting that ring is a special experience Told it off of me I think we need yeah. to move on Kev oh, Round number good. two Round <laughs> Call it me keep sweat Round number two would you rather go three for four with three home runs in a loss, but you hit three home runs, or go one for four, but you hit the game winning single? Uh, I ain't gonna, I'll go, I'm gonna go with one for four. Ah, this you had me, you had me nervous for a little you bit. You talked yourself I, out of the Coco. You know, you want them three home runs in the game. That's a, that's a tough one. That's that would probably be like. That's 50 50. I'll probably say, just looking at the circumstances, looking at all the circumstances, I'll say this would be a better feeling in a championship game going on for four with the walk off. All right, all right. Yeah, I, I had to sway your decision because round three, That's I'm thinking, I, I don't know, B. Jones, but I think it's for 50/50. the win. Yeah, yeah, for the win for one of us. Coco, would you rather be a part of a triple play? Or steal three bases at one at bat, second, third, and home. Triple play, uh, maybe. But I ain't gonna lie, stealing three bases like that. That could put you. Not everybody can do that. Not everybody can do that. I can honestly, yeah, I can honestly say I right, I love to steal three bases back to back, especially stealing home. Everybody can do that. Well, Coco, you stole my heart, and I just stole this game a championship rounds. I am, I am one Jones, I, was trying, I was trying not to get swept. That's why I had to sway that round. Hey, I know, man. I, I felt a swept coming on, man. I, I was hurt. I was wounded bad, man. Hey, it was interesting for the end. Hey, good, good game, good game, good game, KT. I'm, yeah, I'm no, back in the winner seat. Ain't no good game. It's all good. All right, Coco. Well, the title of the show is "You Got Next." So, of course, you know, you got one more year of college eligibility left, correct? Yeah. Or do you have two because this the COVID year didn't count? No, I got one. This will be my last year. Okay, last year. So, what is the what is the future hold for, for Coco, number one? So, of course, I'm really looking to, you know, have a great last year, you know, get my degree, uh, look to move on, play at the next level, you know. And then, of course... Try to look in the future, try to, you know, network myself, try to find what that is going to be best for me after baseball is all said and done. You know, I love to stay in the sport, probably like coach or something like that to start off. But, you know, I like that. my dream job, I would love to be like a sports broadcaster, you know, sports you know, sports anchor. Canada. Hey, start your sports podcast, man. That's why. Get I'm on our show. We're going to be job. waiting for you. That's a lot. We're going to save a seat for you right up here with us, man. Yeah, I would love that. Now, what's going to happen if your name get called out here in the next 48 hours? You foregoing uh, that senior year? Yeah, I'll, it'll be, I'll have to look at it. You know, just looking at it. And depending on how much money it's like, that's you know, right. throwing at me. So, but considering it's my last year I'm so you know and I told my parents I really wanted to get this degree that's so, right 
And then, you know, all this, just being late call, you know, there's not that much money to go towards it. And it'll be a big chance to sign a starter from here. But yeah, that's yeah, the crazy it's thing about it, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's the crazy thing. Like, those, anybody not in the top three rounds, man, them the money is equivalent to working like at Arby's or something. You know what I'm saying? And and then you're traveling and these hotel rooms I heard are horrible. I heard the the, the minor league system is a is a train wreck, man. You gotta get the triple A before you start getting some love, man. Yeah, that's what a lot of people really don't see, you know. You know, I know a lot of guys that have gotten drafted or in a system right now. You know, they still live in regular lives, you know, getting jobs in the off season. You know, you got to do something. Yep. You know, it's not as much money. Like, people see the big contracts from the stars. You know, like baseball make all the money. But, you know, they don't see it. It's pretty much the hardest process to make it to that level. I, I get that, Coco. I saw an article that had, uh, was it Mike Trout, Kev, who signed that historic deal a couple of years ago? Yeah. yeah. Mike Trout's one year was equivalent to the entire payroll on the Oakland Athletics, man. That's ridiculous. <laughs> One player got like fifty million a year, which is more than the entire Oakland Athletics. All forty players were getting paid, bro. I could I couldn't believe that. I couldn't absolutely believe that. All right, Coco. So the, the big dream is to become a broadcaster, man. So uh, all right, we're gonna be we're gonna be looking out for you, Kev. Oh, so where can we find you on uh, social media? Uh, my Instagram, yeah, Seminole underscore fifteen, Twitter. My same thing, similar to underscore 615. You know, I'll be on those two pretty much. I've been on Twitter a lot more just out the past couple of years, but I'm on Instagram a lot. And, you know, I don't, I don't really be on YouTube, so I can't really tell you that. Well, make yeah. sure you do go to YouTube and yeah. you subscribe yeah. to the Sports Life Talk yeah. channel yeah. subscription, sir. Put y'all yeah. out there. Hey, there it is. You know, so there we are. Okay, so. so I can market. We need to talk offline, man. Yeah, we, 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 we sure talk. do, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> See, so I knew it was a reason why I felt a vibe from you, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm, I'm loving this. All right, so do you got any shout-outs? Yeah, I just like to shout-out my parents, both my mom and my dad. They did so much for me in my life. They didn't sacrifice so much for me. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for them. And my sister, she at home. She's always been my, she's always been my hidden number one fan. My mom thinks it's her, but she's always been right there with her. She plays softball, right? Nah, she she means she plays some sports as little, but she wouldn't a sports player. She was a dancer though. Okay. But yeah, if I saw some of her pictures on Instagram, I thought maybe she played softball and you played baseball. Yeah. Yeah, she's a teacher now. Yeah, she loves the little kids. Yeah, yeah, I'm trying so to hard. do it. <laughs> I'm trying to imagine her at these games screaming, go, go! I'm trying. Yeah, she 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 really quiet. My mom, my mom would be the one. That's always shouting. She's the one that you hear in the stands. She's always louder. You're always the loudest one. Yeah, that's a good yeah. mama, man. Good oh, mama. I always love her for it. And my dad's always, he's been all the time, all the work, all the hours with me in the field. So, like, without them, I wouldn't I wouldn't be here with y'all at all. So I love to shout them out and all my family and my team. She, I love those boys. You know, they every day we get it down. We didn't got it out the mud this past year. You know, it was our first year with the school's first year with a team. So we had to, we had to go through a lot. Like people just see our record, but they didn't see what we've been through. And every day they came, gave it they all. Shoot, like I knew I going in the war, they was all fighting. So I knew they all had my back and I had every single one of their back. So I'd like to shout out them and my coach. All my coaches for pretty much helping me through my whole career. A lot they have a lot to do with this too. So you know, let, and from, when, for first and foremost, I'd like to thank God for the opportunity. You know, without him, none of us would be here. So he gave me the ability to do what I had to do and put all these people in my life. You know, I'd like to give him the biggest, the biggest praise. So. That's pretty much how I got to where I am now. All right, man. Well, Coco, you got next, sir. Well, I can't, man. Kev, can we can we get down to, to the to the to the New Orleans area and go go check out Xavier, man? You 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 think we can make that road trip? 
you know I don't like Louisiana, so. But yeah, for Coco, you know I'll be there. Yeah, I, I got a, uh, hey, your first boudin is on me, sir. I got you. I got you on some boudin and some oysters. We're going to have a good time. We're going to come check you out, Coco. I'm definitely going now. Okay, yeah. Food. You feed me? Yeah, I'm going to feed you. I'm going I'm to I'm show you around a little bit. Coco, I, man. I you down there. Can't never go wrong with any place. Can't never go wrong, man. Well, listen, sir, we are so thankful that you were able to stop down and come check out the show. Come on, tell your story. Uh, man, I think I, I think that uh, we got to do a better job of exposing these HBCU athletes, Kevin. So I promise you, man, we're going to do everything in our power to be behind you. If you need anything, feel free to reach out to us. And listen, all of you who are rocking with us right now watching the show, leave some comments. Wish Coco the best. Like, respond. Me and Kevin are maniacal about engagement from the fans. So I promise you, if you say something, we will be right there to answer. Don't, don't forget to subscribe at Sports Life Talk. We go live every Wednesday night on YouTube and Facebook at 8 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time. Did I say that correct, Kev? I get, I get is, reprimanded, sir. ladies and gentlemen, for not for not giving out the, the moniker the right way. All right, but listen, we appreciate y'all. Come be a part of the family. We would love to have you around. Kev, I'm going to leave you with the last word, sir. I mean, even though I lost in the championship round. As uh, usual. Coco. Oh, I was up two games. Coco, so, thank you for being on the show and sharing your story, man. We really appreciate that. Well, I appreciate y'all for having me, man. Yeah, you are welcome, sir. Sports Life Talk Nation, we love you guys. Y'all stay safe. Be blessed. We will see y'all on the other side. And please, 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 everyone, take care of each other. See y'all again next time on Sports Life Talks. You got next. Yeet.